We are starting our GIF animation transformation assignment. This is assignment three. The only thing required is assignment three, and it's required by October 11th, so seven days from now. So that means we have today to work on it, we have Monday to work on it, and we don't have to turn it in until next Wednesday. But it has three components. The first component is our rough storyboard sketch. We're going to try to get that submitted today because we're working against time here. And this gives us all of our planning. Then we're going to know what story we want to tell, what transformation we want to show. And we're going to learn how to set those frames up that scene even if it might take 20 to 50 frames to tell it in the way we want. Once that animation is finished, and we're going to use all freeware tools for it, then we're going to decide what nine frames from that animation tell the story visually like a comic book. And this is what I call a refined storyboard. This will be printed out or can be printed out at full print resolution even though our individual animation will be 8 by 8 inches by 150 pixels per inch. And it's because you can't print an animation. You can only view it on a screen. So it makes sense for this to be screen resolution, but for our storyboard to be print resolution. As long as you follow the assignment parameters, you're going to end up with that. So what we need to decide is what, uh, what aspect of an assignment that we've already created are we going to use because you have to use at least one aspect that you or assignment exercise you've already created as part of your animation and then how are you going to showcase a transformation in either character or setting or both so this is an example of a transformation of setting the character we're experiencing it through is this sun that wakes up and goes to sleep. But the sun doesn't actually change, it just moves. It's the, the sky that changes, right? And the clock changes, but these are just movements. The sky shows us that something's actually transformed. Here, we don't have a transformation. We just have zooming in and a really cute expression, right? Here we have a transformation because it starts one way, ends another way. Here we have a transformation. Starts one way with him bald, ends another way. So it can be the addition of a new element. It can be the change of an existing element, but it can't just be movement of existing elements. This is a, an illustrator I really like named Evan M. Cohen. And he does both print illustration and animations. And he does them all himself. You know, it's hard to find animation that's just done by one person. So he's very efficient and limited with it. It's all digital. So here you see his, his print that shows these nine frames. And then this is his rough animatic for this transformation. So it's just these nine frames played. And then using that, he's able to decide how to smooth it out into a finished animation. And what I love about it is he adds some subtle things that just make it a lot better. So it's a lot more than nine frames. This is more like, like 30 frames. But once it ends at the flower, you'll see that the flower petals fall away and it's just a sun and then that dissolves, and then the bird flies in from the left. So this is called setting to reset, so that it works as a beautiful loop. This is still the main transformation that's shown, but it sets to reset so it can just play endlessly and be rewarding. Also, smartly, he simplified another transformation that you saw in his, in his comic print. In the comic print, it starts with this background, with the sun and with the clouds, and then those, those slowly fade away. And that's a transformation of setting. 
for the animation so that we pay more attention to the transformation of the figure of the character he has simplified the background so the background is not transforming anymore it's just moving and it moves consistently does that all kind of make sense so the reason we save it both ways is not just so you can have a portfolio piece that you can print and show that you've learned animation skills but so you can also see how time-based media uh, is experienced differently by the viewer, can emphasize different aspects of visual art than still media. So they're both telling a story, but this is one where you control the, the viewer's expression of time. All right, thank you. All right. Sounds like it works. So my inspiration are these images. And then the, the pre-existing assignment that I did was exercise two. I want to use my vector cat. So the first thing I want to do is create a new folder for assignment three. Then I want to open up any assets I've already designed. So I've already made my cat in exercise two. And I want to go to my most finished version, which is going to be the PSD. And I'm going to hold down option and drag it to the desktop. And when you hold down option and drag, click and drag, you see how the little green plus sign is there? It's going to make a duplicate of it. And then I'm going to move that to assignment three. So that's one asset. What other assets do I want? I know I want watercolor fish. So I'm going to go to Pixabay. I'm going to look up fish watercolor. See what I've got. I can limit the images to just illustrations. Oh, there's a fish skull already there, or a skeleton. Here's another fish skeleton. But maybe I'll create my own vomit. I don't know if I have the stomach for looking up Pixabay for, for cat vomit images. There's a very pretty fish. So I'll have a few options, right? All right, I'm going to download them. I'm not going to download them very big. These do not need to be large resolution because animations are, are screen, screen resolution. They're still going to be at more than 1,000 pixels because this is Pixabay. And then this is the only one I need to take the time to cut out. So let's move all of those, those fish assets. Move them into assignment three. And before I can do much more, I need to sketch it out. I need to make my rough storyboard sketch, this thing. So I'm going to do it in Photopea, just so you can see what digital sketching looks like. But I encourage you to just sketch it normally so you can make additions and always reference it. And I'm just going to do this in Photopea by making a new project. I'm going to have my assets over here. So I'm thinking of the things I want to use. And anything I can't find, I can create. And remember, you have to use at least one thing you've already designed, you've already made. Actually, I don't want that. And I want to design it within a square. And that square is going to be 800. Actually, it's going to be 8 inches by 8 inches. But I'm just going to do my sketch on an 8 by 10 inch piece of paper. And I'll go ahead and do it at 72 pixels per inch. 
This is just my planning sketch. All right, I'm going to use my brush. I'll use blue, why not? I'm going to make it pressure sensitive. I'm going to take the opacity down to about 70. And I want it to be about the size of a pencil eraser for the page. It's just basic digital sketching. I draw a square. And if I want to, I can use my compositing knowledge <laughs> to not have to draw nine squares. I can just Command J and make three by three squares. And then I can flatten all of that. Take this. Doesn't matter if your squares are even or not. But you do want to leave space between them so that you can make little notes as needed. All right, this is going to showcase my transformation. I'm going to flatten it again. And now on a new layer, I'll start sketching. And I'll use black for this. So how do I start it? I start by introducing my character. You need character setting and the illusion of time passing. We get the illusion of time passing uh, through sequential images. So I'm going to start by introducing INT, is shorthand for introduction, my cat. Okay. Now, that cat's going to be the same in general size. I'm not going to zoom in on the cat or change the cat. So I can do what I did with the squares. I can duplicate the cat, merge those three things together. Or you can just draw it really loosely. But you can see how digital's, digital art's ability to make perfect copies of things over and over again helps speed up kind of the drudgery of animation. Still requires a lot of planning. Okay, now I introduced the cat. The cat's going to stay there throughout. So what's going to change? I want to open up the cat's head. So I'm going to have fish introduced. They're going to start swimming across the cat. So now this is a second character that's being introduced. This is something storyboards do. The fish are going to be traveling in this direction. At least this first fish is. And he's going to travel in front of the cat. So I can note that by saying action. F in front. I hate writing with digital sketching. Of C, of cat. Right. And then here we have the fish leaving still going this direction. Now I'm going to have a fish going this direction. And it's going to travel in front of the cat. But before it can leave, the cat's head is going to open up just on its side, like so. This is my idea. In fact, I can even preview what I'm going to do. I'm just going to cut it with my lasso like that and then I'm just going to transform it so I can use option command T to get to free transform and then I'm just going to tilt it up like that inspired by Terry Gilliam And before the fish gets away, he's going to eat it, right? So that's the main kind of action. So mouth opens, 